No mask, no service. Discrimination? A terrifying creature invades the South. And is COVID-19 a get-out-of-jail-free card? All that and more coming up right now on the BS Podcast. You're listening to the The BS BS Podcast, Podcast, where we cover all of the bullshit in the news and more. Now, welcome your hosts, Dave and Zach. Hello and welcome to the BS Podcast, where we're talking the top 10 most absurd, ridiculous, and bullshittiest stories over the past few days. I am Dave, and joining me is my fellow connoisseur in bullshit, Zach. Zach, how you doing, buddy? Good, man. How are you? I am great. Great to talk to you uh, uh, each and every week to catch up on all this bullshit going on in the (laughs) world, Zach. (laughs) It's... uh, for, you know, before we before we get into everything, before we get into our top ten list, before we even get into hyper local bullshit, let's explain a little bit for those who are a little unfamiliar with our show what we do here. Zach, Zach, what's the show all about? It's about bullshit, as you can get <laughs> from the title. But uh, you know, we cover a lot of news stories that uh, our uh, mother site informed the American, and for us, we take. We take a lot of the uh, little more lighthearted stories that we can look at and laugh at, and uh, we just go over them and have a discussion about it. Absolutely, there uh, there is so much nonsense out there in the world, and you know you get you kind of get bogged down on it. You're trying to be an informed American, you know, by going to informedamerican.com, and we ha- we do have that little BS tab there at the top. That was the inspiration of the show. It's just all the stupid stuff out there, and. You know, and, and we it sort of expanded beyond that, you know, beyond what's the stuff that's on the website. And it's just the more you look for weird stuff, the more you find it's oh, like yeah. peel, peeling an onion back, right? <laughs> so exactly we're right. here, we're here having fun. We're here to be humorous. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we'd love you to, we'd love you to come along for that journey and uh, laugh along with us at all the stupid crap that's out there in the world. So with that, Zach, let's, uh, let me run down our top 10, our top 10 bullshittiest stories over the past few days. Number one, no mask, no service. Is this discrimination? That's the thing I mentioned at the top. Number two, more dumb face mask innovations. Number three, dude, you forgot the gloves. Number four, a terrifying creature invades Georgia and Florida. Number five, that's a lot of onions. Number six, German prison sounds great. <laughs> Another, uh, this is maybe the creepiest story of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, here, have a sip of Corona. <laughs> Number eight, COVID terrorism. Number nine, a lockdown violator slapped with a massive fine. And number 10, Florida man goes for a swim. <laughs> it's always Florida man, man. <laughs> <laughs> they are the best. All right, so before we get into our top 10 topics, Zach, let's, let's zoom in, Ralph, from the national scale down to hyper-local news, hyper-local bullshit. What's going on in your sphere? Um, just constantly getting fucked by Airbnb, <laughs> as you know. Um, you know, it's, it's my dumbass fault for rescheduling vacations, you know, that originally got canceled, you know, said, hey, this country will be completely opened up again by June. It's not going to happen. So okay. I was like, all right, so- well, you know what, let me, let me cancel i'm still within my 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 refund period or whatever Christ. um you're like march and april kind of thing then you- yeah yeah um so uh airbnb you know they let, they put out that big statement yeah you know coronavirus it's extenuating circumstances uh-huh. you know you'll get a refund kind of deal um so you know i went to cancel and it said refund uh, I said the amount that it was, and then it said zero. And I was like, what the hell? You said refund. So, and the reason I clicked COVID-19, and then it said, it showed my refund, and it said pending uh, renter, like, approval. So, mm-hmm. then I get an email back saying that the renter is refusing to do your refund. But here's a $100 uh, coupon <laughs> for your next Airbnb stay. Thanks for nothing. Yeah. So, they're like, yeah, we'll do a refund if, if the renter uh, will approve it, which of course they're going to say no, you know, they got to pay their mortgage and shit, but still it's, you know, come on. Yeah. And we, we touched on this last week, last week. And I, I believe I asked you, does this mean you are, are you so dissatisfied that you'll never book an Airbnb again? Have you, have you changed your mind? <laughs> Honestly, <Because> you said no, <laughs> you know, I said no. And I, I'm still saying like, and I think right now I'm just pissed off. So I'm saying I'm fucking done with Airbnb, but honestly, I probably will still end up using them again when, <laughs> when Corona isn't running, you know, rampant or whatever. Because oh, the financial incentive, it's still cheaper. And the oh, yeah. is, it's, from my experience, they've always been, uh, they've oh. all been pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Um, 
Now, sometimes a little, sometimes the photographs are a little misleading, making you think that the place is bigger than it is. That's happened a couple of times. Um, I end up, you know, my wife and I ended up in a closet essentially with a bed. <laughs> well, that's just real estate photography, uh, yeah. you know, one on one. Put on a wide lens and like, you know, make rooms look gigantic. Yeah. Uh, so, but I think this is absolute bullshit. Well, I think really what's going on is the the company itself is like threatening or is in danger of going under. I think yeah. that's a real thing. Um, but you know, I mean, you got to build some goodwill and you know, for these, I mean, think about it. I understand the person who's renting you the thing they've got, they've most, many of these people have a mortgage on some of these, on these properties yeah. and they got to make their payment and stuff like that. So they say, screw Zach, I'm taking the cash. But you know you're losing a bit of goodwill there, and yeah, maybe maybe Zach might might rebook at some point, but many other people will not. And so now it's like, I don't know, do I really want to? At least I know at a hotel I can cancel and get my money back without this kind of hassle. I can, you know, Marriott won't screw me over most most likely. But you know, yeah. just for example, whereas you're left to the whims of individual people. Yeah, and the other thing I think hotels and resorts and all, even if they don't give you a money a full like money refund, they'll yeah. probably still do kind of like a. Uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll give you a coupon for like a future, for the amount that you were owed. We'll put in a credit for like a future booking or something like that, where. Yeah. And they were just offering you just a small percentage, right? Yeah. hundred bucks on a $700 reservation. Thanks. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks so much. (laughs) Thanks for the coupon. And I think it wasn't even, it was like, well, well, we just won't charge you the service fee basically. I'm like, okay. Oh, that's just not good enough. (laughs) No. And I don't know about, uh, I mean, I don't know if you're, if you're a, I guess if you're a renter, I mean, another, I'm trying to think, you know, who, who's been covered by uh, these, these big like PPP loans and government bailout stuff. I, I got to imagine that if you, if you rent out a lot, you may uh, classify yourself as like a, a small business or an LLC or something. And you, you may be eligible for, uh, for some kind of uh, government run money. Right. So I wonder now if they're even double dipping, you know, if, if they can get covered by federal relief and now just keeping your cash. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I wonder if because it's rented through Airbnb, if like Airbnb is the company that gets the, the stimulus, yeah, not yeah, the renter. Could be. It's, always the big, it's always the big guys who screw everybody over. Yeah, I don't, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know anyone that has a place that they sell on Airbnb. So, <laughs> Last thing I want to ask you, Zach, do you know how interesting this topic is? What's the weather like in Maryland, Zach? <laughs> oh, man, it is uh, about 65-ish. <laughs> A little, little partly sunny. Uh, it's lovely up here. I know you Great. guys are getting a stifling heat down in Florida. Yeah. Well, in fact, yesterday we had a storm blow off over the, the Gulf of Mexico. It's uh, soaked everything. And now we're back to 85 and muggy. So yeah. <laughs> here we are. Uh, I was just always stupid to talk about the weather. That's why I want to always, in- I, want to, I want to include it in the show. Yeah. Uh, in terms of me, hyper-local bullshit, I, I'm, de- I'm dealing with a little issue with my homeowners association. I don't want to get too, too into it, but uh, it's just, you know, one of those annoying things. It, it comes down to my dog and uh, my, my pup is great. And we've got a little, we've got a little common area sort of in the back of our, of our uh, townhome association where uh, I let her, which is a short walk from my back patio, let her off, off of her leash. She does her business. She doesn't bother anybody. There's a couple of other dogs in the neighborhood that also go in there and play. Nobody goes there unless you're kind of there with your dog. And uh, we got a notice about uh, having the dog off leash and, and not picking up her, her business, which is an absolute false allegation. Yeah. Whoever, whoever's, if you, yeah. if you reported me, you, you falsely accused me. I always pick up after my dog. So I'm a little bit irritated about that. Oh, that sucks, man. You know, HOA is the thing about them is it's either like they are worth it or not. And it's like, usually if they are worth it, they cost so damn much, much like per month that it's like, why the hell are we paying this anyway? Yeah. Mine. Um, well, yes, exactly. That's exactly right. And, and ours was a little somewhere in the middle. And, um, and even there's even a guy who's on the, who's on the board who, who would join me in the same area for his dog to play with mine off leash. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's a little irritating. So I might talk to him and be like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Although I, I think we've been wrongly accused. I think there's a troublemaker there. That's not picking up after their dog, uh, like on the, on, in the front, because one day my wife and I were heading to our driveway to head out to our car. And we noticed there was a, a green dog poop bag uh, full, full of shit. <laughs> thrown onto our driveway and we went, oh. what the hell is this? And 
the timing seems to work out that whoever uh-huh. whoever picked up that through the bag is the one who reported us. But it wasn't us because you know that's in the front. She shits in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, unless my the person, HOA, yeah, my HOA is like it's like 30 bucks a month, but they don't fucking do anything. They don't do anything. You know what I mean? So it's like, why? Like, uh, yeah, uh, 30 bucks a month. That's, that's nothing. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll pay that for HOA, but if they're not doing anything, like I'd rather pay nothing. Right. Yeah. You know, mine's mine's a lot more, but it's not as bad as some of the others. Some of them are like five, 600 bucks a month, which mine isn't that high. Oh, uh, but that's, I mean, you got to, so you think about that, you know, I'm going to buy a place and I got my mortgage and I got this freaking HOA that's like, you know. Yeah. If, if I like am paying $600 for an HOA, you better have like a, a community pool. Uh, you better mow my lawn. You better do a whole bunch of shit. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. outrageous. And fix my property essentially. Yeah. So then I feel, I'm, I feel this is bull, a, HOA bullshit is basically what's been going on with me. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's annoying. It's just really irritating. <laughs> yeah. Cause, and I understand thing about the leashes i get it but you know and, and not to be like my dog is special but she kind of is i mean she really <laughs> does just mind her own business she sniffs she hangs out she doesn't she really doesn't bother anybody doesn't bark except rarely uh and uh you know it's it's always the it's always the it's always the troublemakers that make you know make makes life worse for everybody else oh yeah that goes beyond dogs that's just everybody yeah absolutely uh, all right. So uh, now that I now that I made the case for my for my dog, who's actually laying right here, don't worry, girl. It's, it's, don't, I'm not gonna <laughs> let him talk bad about you. <laughs> I was like, let's get into story number one. No mask, no entry. Is it discrimination? We've got a hilarious. Well, we, before we got a lot of great videos, yeah. so let's get to this great video. So this is to set the stage here. There's this woman in Orange County, California. She's going into a grocery store. Uh, worker. They have a policy where if you don't have a mask, you can't go in. She does not like this, and she claims discrimination. Let's pull up this thing and uh, show everybody what we're talking about. The Nelson specifically is not allowing any customer or employee inside the store without a mask of some sort of size. Okay, so I need to talk to a manager because... I will absolutely humbly go get a manager yeah. for you if you'd like to hang out with me for awesome. just a moment. If not, we can provide you with one. I'm not wearing a mask. Okay, understood. Perfect. Let me just a moment and I'll bring you to Go ahead. So, first off... Oh, well, this guy in his glasses, they are not—they don't seem to be serving any purpose other oh, than I know. sitting on his mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're barely hanging on there. Yeah. And then we get hurt. I'd like to talk to a manager. So here we, here we go. Classic. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Hi. Hi, I have a medical condition that I'm not allowed to wear a mask and I'm not required by HIPAA rule, re, rules and regulations to okay. disclose that. Okay, can we shop for so, you? So, um, what does that look like? We I have private things I want to get, but maybe I don't want you to shop see. For you, but I can't let you in the store without a mask. Okay, so where's the regulations that state that? The regulations? Yeah. That, that is company Because you're discriminating against me now. Do you know that? I'm, I'm, I'm you're discriminating you against that me. We can help you. No. Because I have okay. private, inf- I have private stuff okay. that I don't want okay. you to see. And then you can call corporate office, but I can't help you. Okay, well, you guys are gonna get a lawsuit because you can't, you can't discriminate. Yes, I'm trying to help you, but I'm no, not. No, you argue can't. With you. How, how is that? How's that helping when you're gonna do shopping for me? I'm gonna give you my bank information. I'm doing the best I can how do I, you. how do I do the transaction? Transactions will do for you. No, you're, I'm gonna give you my credit card, my private credit card, sure. for you to go and take and pay with my. We're trying to help you. Best how's that can. helping me? Miss Co- corporate office, I'm sorry. Okay, I need a card. Do you have a card for them? I sure can. That'd yeah. be great. This is Shelly Lewis. I'm at um, Dana Point Gelson's. So if anybody who, um, if anybody wants to shop here, you have to have a mask. And here is the, the policies, which um, state that they will shop for me, take my, my money, my private credit card, and um, utilize that. I'm gonna just let them go do that. So um, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. So what the hell? What? what do- <laughs> I love when she's like, "You're gonna get a lawsuit," and he's like, well, "I don't fucking care." <laughs> he, he's gonna like, sue me. Yeah. He's like, "You're gonna sue this this company." It's like, <laughs> he's like, "I'm just doing what they tell me." I'm like, so she walks in, or tries to walk in, and uh, she sees the manager. Tells the manager, what, I've got a medical condition that doesn't allow me to wear a mask and that information is protected by the HIPAA privacy law, so I, I can't 
disclose this to you. You just have to let me in. No questions asked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the whole thing um, is that according to HIPAA, you, you don't have to disclose disability to someone, which, you know, makes sense. But somewhere in April, people uh, started using this to their benefit. Um, I don't know if anyone saw, but there was something going around social media where they were, people were given directions that are exactly what this lady is doing this video. They were like saying, hey, friends, if you don't want to wear a mask in the store, all you have to say is I have a disability and I can't wear a mask. And if they ask what your disability is, you just say, I'm protected. I don't have to tell you that. Right. So this is like, yes, you found, you can find this on uh, Snopes.com. It says, can people without disabilities use an ADA mask loophole? ADA referring to Americans with Disabilities Act. But like, and as you say, you know, HIPAA protects privacy. It's, you know, it's like when you go to the doctor, it's that last form you sign mm-hmm. essentially to give uh, disclosure that you're, you're allowing your health information to be given to your, disclosed to your doctor, but, and also that they won't share it. They'll protect that information from uh, other parties. Now, you can't just say like, it's the HIPAA law, so I don't have to tell you. <laughs> That's not how this works. I mean, you can, and it's obviously working for some people. Now, whether she actually has a disability or not, who knows? Um, I think the bullshit in the matter of all of this is that there are people going out there doing this when they don't have a disability. You know what I mean? And that's exactly. bullshit against people that do have a disability. Cause I'm sure at some point there is someone that has a legit medical reason that they cannot wear that mask. Um, you know, there was some people I saw in the comments of this video that she was like, she was like, I cannot breathe. She was like, I cannot hear. She was like, she uses um, something about her mouth where people need to read her lips or something. And she was saying how difficult it is. And then after all that, she goes, and I still wear the fucking mask in her comments. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. I mean, there is a, we have public accommodation uh, and I understand that, but there are limits and, you know, in something like a pandemic, maybe, maybe just someone else has to go to the store for you. I mean, you know, in other words, I, I, I there, there must be some, some point where public safety outweighs even something like uh, protecting you know, as I said, allowing people with disability, you know, you know, access, stuff like that. This is very different than a wheelchair kind of a thing, you know? Um, Yeah. And I mean, with, with modern technology, there's no reason you even need to leave your home to go shopping. You know, anything you want, you can just get online and have it delivered to you usually through, I don't know, you know, if you're getting food, Uber Eats or, you know, shipped or Instacart or whatever that may be. Um, the fact of the matter is there's definitely some people that are going out there using this excuse just to rile people up and cause problems. Yeah. And they are actually, they, and even, yes, that's what's going on. This is the bullshit here. She is clearly looking for attention, trying to cause trouble, or for whatever reason, she doesn't want to wear a mask because fine, you don't want to wear a mask, whatever the reason. And just trying to basically, I think, I think she's essentially trying to use this, this, this loophole that's been going around social media to go into the store. Now they even try, and I'm even going to defend them further. They actually did try to accommodate her, which is to let her stay outside the store, do her shopping. And, you know, of course I'm going to give you my private bank information. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like <laughs> she wasn't interested in a resolution. Yeah. No. You know? I mean, I don't blame her. I wouldn't have wanted to give him my like bank card either. I mean, but even if you hand it to the store manager for him to ring it in for you, I mean, I think, well, what do you do? I mean, you have, there has to be some middle ground here. Oh yeah. There absolutely has to be some middle ground. I mean, I'm, and honestly, I'm sure they could have brought out a little scanner yeah. or something like there's, they they got mobile ones that can travel around with you. I'm something sure like they, Stripe or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that store has some piece of equipment there that they could have used. Um, but yeah, it, like you said, there was like, they tried to make a resolution and it wasn't happening. Um, because she wasn't looking for a resolution, she was there to grandstand and make a point and uh, and record her. She was clearly recording herself and put it on social media. So this is just some 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 jackass looking for attention. Yeah. <laughs> now, now before we get out of the story, um, there was a, a hilarious bit which because you think this is over, you know, she gets the card from the manager, but there's a little bit more here that's is absolutely worth playing and is hilarious. So let's let's check this. Bit out. This goes back to the guy with the glasses. Where his story is not over yet. <laughs> But you're pretty, you're pretty chipper. You're pretty chipper. Huh? You're happy? Why not be? Why are you happy? Yeah. Normally I'm 
wouldn't have a bartender and I wouldn't have a guest. Yeah. I have a guest. Well, good. I mean, I'm glad you guys think it's okay to like infringe on people's rights here. You're infringing on people's rights. Realistically, my dear, there is no way my card is Sorry? I'm sorry, I can't help you. But but that's the number to our corporate office. Okay, what's your name? Okay, my name is Ben. Ben? Mm -hmm. Okay, Ben. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, thanks, thanks Ben. Patience. So this guy almost single handedly ruins her time by just you know, happily dancing, you know, her negative time, he just kind of steps all over it and does yeah. a little twirl and a wipe down with a car carriage. He's still got he's the a happy, he's a, he's yes, a happy. So what do you got? What do you got to be so happy about? You know, they're discriminating against me. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I was a bartender and I've got this job. I think life is kind of great. Stop dry, trying to drag me down. Like, I think part of her wanted to laugh. You know what I mean? And like <laughs> yeah. see him and like starts laughing. But then she, cause she kind of starts out. She's like, oh, you happy? You know, she's, you can hear it in her voice. She's like laughing a little bit and <laughs> like snaps back to it. And she's like, wait a second. I'm supposed to be being a bitch right now. He's like, uh, stop, you know, I've got a, I'm, I'm doing a performance here where I'm the angry, you know, self-righteously indignant citizen who's being discriminated against. And meanwhile, you did to like an idiot. I can't handle it now. <laughs> oh, great. This is, this is the story of the week. All right, Zach, let's stay on the topic of masks. We've got, we've been seeing these innovations in face masks and, uh, you know, people trying to either make them more comfortable for themselves, like that woman, I believe, in Tennessee who just sliced right down the middle um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to help her breathe, which completely oh, yeah. invalidated the purpose of the mask. And there's, this has basically been going on. We have a thing called a mask, which goes over your face and your nose. <laughs> and anything that disrupts that... <laughs> not a good yeah. idea doesn't make it a mask anymore no uh it just makes it a piece of uh fashion i guess or yeah. something so with that let's let's show we got two here we <laughs> The story comes from the Daily Mail. Pack lunch, mask that opens like a pack, like Pac man lets restaurant diners eat without the need to take it off. So I put up a picture of this. This is the stupidest thing I've ever <laughs> seen. <Zach. laughs> you know it. It is better than the damn woman that cut the hole right directly in her mask. At least this one can shut at some point. You know what I mean? Um, it's even better than the other one that's been going around, like the the straw hole one. Yeah, we got that one too. Let's let's let's, let's, br let's bring this one up too, because this is really two, two stories in one. This is a straw hole in the mask. Again, you this isn't a, <laughs> you're supposed to cover that area. <laughs> But this thing, this Pac-Man thing, this is an absolute contraption, right? There's no way this 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 goddamn thing works, and it's 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 so weird looking. It's so ugly too. It's yeah. At some point, they're just gonna have to make some kind of ruling to disband the masks altogether, <laughs> because with everyone finding the the loopholes and yeah. you know cutting holes in their masks, like just not doing anything anymore, no. you know. At, at the end of the day, like it's a fucking mask, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> you know, it's it's there are so much bigger issues that are going on in this country to worry about. Um, so that that's the most frustrating thing to me. Um, yeah, is that you know there are so many other you know personal stances or or things that you can fight, but masks is like just wear the fucking thing or don't go outside yeah it's not that big of a deal and we know this is temporary despite what you know anyone out there wearing a tinfoil hat this is temporary they're not going to make you wear a mask for the rest of your life or anything like that we're not going to need a constitutional amendment about my right to not wear a mask anything like that just, just put the mask on or don't go outside because i think that's bullshit just trying to get around the mask thing i mean really these two stories in one just wear the mask. It's not that bad. And if you really have a medical condition, there's a, there's a way of accommodating you, not not by either grandstanding or cutting a hole in it. Yeah. <laughs> Although I guess, I mean, you say I had to wear. I mean, maybe that woman in the grocery store could have just cut the hole. Just cut the whole thing out. I'm wearing a mask. Can't say I'm not wearing it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It, it, this thing is uh, is really bringing out the, the strange in people. Zach, let's move on to story number three. Dude, you forgot the gloves. The guy walks into Target in a full bodysuit, but forgot one very crucial piece of his bodysuit equipment. Let's we'll take a look at this video. It's October. It's a, it's you, my boyfriend won't want one, my mom. Listen, what, yo, what's this made out of? 
I did it with plastic and I did it with um, reflect. So, so she's interested in what? The, she wants a, suit, a series of suits for herself? <laughs> I really do want to know what that's made out of. You know what it kind of looked like when I first saw this video? It looked like, you know, those big plastic bags that bedding comes in. Yeah. It goes stormed by like a comforter. That's what it looks like. It looks like <laughs> one of those plastic bags and you just put it on his head and was like, shit, I need the rest of my body. So I don't know. Maybe you went to Home Depot and got like those plastic like sheets that you lay down when you paint and just duct taped himself up but that's what it seemed like because it's not it's like like dry cleaner plastic because that's a, a very big choking hazard so oh, yeah, yeah. Right, but how hot must it have been in that thing though <laughs> so, you know he's out there looking for duct tape i guess to secure you know whatever he's got this whole thing and uh but he he seems to have missed a crucial body part the thing that actually goes and touches yeah. all of the surfaces which are gloves <laughs> it's so funny how like different people are in this country right now like we had this guy who's covering himself head to toe with besides his hands in plastic yeah and you have people that are like won't wear mat won't even wear a face mask <laughs> it's the funniest thing like these the, the how separate and like divided the country is when it comes to protecting yourself from coronavirus <laughs> Yeah, this contrast, right? I mean, yeah, yeah it's my right as an American and not wear a mask. And this guy, he's trying his damnedest to recreate a hazmat suit. Yeah. <laughs> now, I will admit, and we may, you know, I'm sure we've touched on this over the weeks, that I was I'm closer to this man <laughs> than I was the lady trying to get into the grocery store. I was really, I was that way. I felt like it took a while for, well, as news came out about, about the surface stuff um, and, you know, in general, just, you don't have to worry about you don't have to be hazmat basically that that's not really how it transmits it's really about you know i mean i guess if somebody well i guess he's got to protect it if somebody sneezes on him or something like that but i don't know i guess you wear the bucket bucket on the yeah, head the bucket was the best <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all i had on that one you want to move on to number four a terrifying creature invades georgia and florida oh, just, just, <laughs> this thing is fucking scary Oh, it's terrifying. We got video on this too. Argentine black and white tegus are a large lizard, not native to the United States. It has become established as an exotic invasive species in several sites in South Florida, and we now believe in the tombs in Tattnall County area of Georgia. We're trying to remove them from the wild because they can have negative impacts on our native species. Um, they eat just about anything they want, plant and animal matter, and one of their favorite foods are eggs from ground nesting animals such as gopher tortoises, our protected state reptile, uh, birds including turkeys and quail. They're also a burrowing species. They'll make their own burrows, but they'll also use the burrows made by other animals, including our native gopher tortoise, and they may displace gopher tortoises in doing so. Uh, Zach, this is the Argentine tegu. It, uh, it, another one where someone, for whatever reason, and I think you were maybe guilty of this too, people buying these strange reptiles as pets and then releasing them into the wild. And with the, the warmer climate in Florida and Georgia, these things survive and thrive. They're an absolute terror. Now you, you're a snake guy, right? No, I, I don't like snakes. I thought you wanted a snake as a pet. Oh, I did when I was little, but not okay. now. <laughs> well, I mean, wisened up? Yeah. Yeah, when I was little, I wanted one, um, but uh, not now. No way. It says, uh, Georgia Department of Natural Resources is warning residents that an invasive species of giant lizards has established in the state, posing a threat to wildlife and crops because they, <laughs> quote, eat anything they want. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I saw a video on YouTube of this thing chasing a dog. I don't know if you've seen it. I'll, I'll play it. But yeah, uh, put it up. Yeah, it gets up on its hind legs and like starts like chasing at. I mean, this fucking thing is fast, man. <laughs> um, a lot faster than I picture them being. But like, it is terrifying when you when you see this dog go up to like sniff it and it just gets on its hind legs and just fucking darts at it. Yeah, I mean, the dog kind of looks like it wants to play a little bit, kind of feeling it out. And that thing just kind of like yeah, like lunges right yeah at. yeah 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 so um they look like komodo dragons they look like little komodo dragons and that's terrifying oh bastards they, <clears throat> they go about four to five feet they got this long tail that whips around they got uh -huh. these sharp claws they got these teeth that are like uh i don't know what you call like reverse inset so that so it pulls and then it could do like shake and rip your rip your flesh mm. i mean oh disgusting why do you people have these as pets <laughs> it, 
I hate it. Now I saw that they just they just outlawed them in Georgia and Florida, rightly. But you know, there's going to be some stupid Joe Exotic version of oh, a yeah. guy who's trafficking these things. Oh yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's going to be the next. Uh, what do they call it again? Invasive species? No, the the, oh. the the actual name of this particular lizard. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, a, te- a tegu. Tegu. So we're going to have like Netflix tegu king is going to be coming <laughs> out soon. King. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of there are YouTube videos of pet owners, and it's you know. It's it's absurd. It's a it's a goddamn lizard. It doesn't <laughs> like you. <laughs> it, it wants to kill you. There's a there's a quote in here. Now the thing goes around and uh, one of the favorite one of the favorite foods is eggs from ground nesting animals such as gopher tortoise are protected state reptile birds including turkeys and quail. Uh, now also they they go in and take alligator eggs, which I'll have to say I don't mind that because I hate alligators too. <laughs> I think they should. Yeah. Now, okay, you live in Florida. Is that like an actual threat? Like, do you act? Is that like an actual like you really sit there and worry about alligators from time to time? Um, it depends. I mean, not not personally. I'm not afraid of getting attacked by one. But but we take the dog to to parks, and basically, where, where we are, any sort of any body of fresh water or salty fresh water is assumed to have alligators in it. Okay, so, you got to kind of like watch, yeah. Yeah, as you got to watch, yeah, watch your not not get too close. Uh, there's a park right nearby me that's like there's there must be thousands of alligators that live in the in in the lake, uh, mm. but they're not like out walking around. Um, yeah. Once in a while, you'll see like a little one jump into the water or something. But so it's not like Jurassic Park. It's not. No, like no, no. Okay. <laughs> the, I don't know why. That's all I'd always imagine of people that live in Florida. Like they got to constantly like worry about alligators. Like especially if you live on the water, like coming come, come up to your house and like you know eating you now up. some i mean there are like if you happen to live if you have like say your back back uh your back i don't know your backyard has say a large pond or small lake uh that is as is, is a worry you should have a fence because that's yeah come up to your back door. that um so that my sister and brother-in-law live in st john's florida mm-hmm. and they uh they live right their backyard is right on a pond yeah and, i mean right there and they they did have to put a fence in when they bought their house because they had they have seen alligators in their pond oh yeah and don't let your cat outside because that becomes a meal yeah yeah Um, their dog i mean they got a dog that's not that big i mean it's probably this i mean i'm sure an alligator would take take their dog for dinner oh i mean my dog is 75 pounds and i i I don't think she's she has a chance i mean you know you can you just got to run away because she goes up you know they they sit there like little assholes peeking their eyes up above the surface just waiting for anything to come and dogs are so curious they're like well what's that friend and they go over (laughs) take a sniff and then it gets him fucking twirls it down and does what is it the murder roll or something like that yeah a death roll death roll, death roll. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thankfully my dog is not isn't she's she's more cautious than most so like some if the times where she's seen a snake she's actually like backed off of it which is good um but i don't know how you feel i, I don't know if you know what a if you're familiar with a with a gopher tortoise but it happens to be one of my if not my favorite animal you know they live underground they, they're just like the coolest things they live really they live in the in sandy soil so they dig holes um and they come out. They come out during the day in the heat. They they could be like, you know, well, as big as they they could be huge. Sure. But you see them at parks. They just kind of just kind of mosey on, eat grass. They're just so chill. So I'd hate to see something like these things oh, get yeah. eaten and attacked. So. No, we don't have those in Maryland. <laughs> I mean, occasionally, occasionally, I might find a, a turtle sitting in my front yard, and I have to pick it up and take it to like the woods near my yeah, house. Yeah. But uh, they're they're probably like this big. You know, they're right, pretty right. small. These guys are sort of like, I think they're like the stoners of the animal kingdom. <laughs> they're just so chill. They've got their little holes. They walk slow. I mean, it's a big animal who's just in no hurry to go anywhere. Just, you know, gnawing on grass and kind yeah. of walk going out for a stroll or whatever. Good for him. I think they're really cool. So I hate to see any threat and any, anything threatening their, their existence, but never mind the stupid Tegu. Give me a freaking break with this <laughs> bullshit. All right, Zach. And I'm just, I get really angry about this. <laughs> Let's get, tell, to, let's get to let's get to our let's get to number five. That's get a lot the worst of, shit that we could be angry about, right? <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> oh, by the way, there's another story that, before we leave this. Take it one time. There's a man who told a story. This story comes from uh, I think, I believe, 2015. Um, he was chased off by one of these things. He came across it in his garage. So yeah, absolute menace. Can we kill them all, please? Uh, all right, let's go to story number five, Zach. That's a lot of onions. <laughs> Story coming from China, the Daily Mail. <laughs> a broken woman takes revenge on her cheating ex-boyfriend by sending him a ton, a literal ton of onions to make him, quote, cry as much as I did. Is this, is this an overreaction, Zach? What cool. Do you uh, hats off to her for the creativity. I mean, that yeah. is a creative way to get back at someone. <laughs> um, 
that being said, I feel extremely bad for the receiver of those onions because I fucking hate onions. So if someone sent me even one onion, I would lose my damn mind. What if, uh, what if somebody sent you this? Uh, <laughs> <Is> this <laughs> <laughs> would this have, would this have uh, been cl- sent a message enough or would you, one would have oh, yeah. been enough, right? So this yeah, yeah, yeah that, that would send a message. <laughs> I mean, if they were cut up especially, I fucking can't stand onions. Oh, this couldn't have been the way they make you feel, the way they make your uh smell. Oh yeah, they'd make you so yeah, just hear a cry. Yeah, they'll make. Well, yeah, that's good. She could have. She could have also went that extra step and said, "Here, slice up, slice up a ton and dump them with like." Oh. A <laughs> but yeah, hats off to her for creativity. And I tell you what, the real winner in all this is whoever was the proprietor of said onions. Oh you know, yeah, who, whoever she bought a ton of onions from was that guy had a good payday. I assume. <laughs> Certainly, I don't know what the going rate of onions are in China, but I'm sure a, 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 a two thousand pounds yeah. would, would be a pretty penny. <laughs> oh man! So, so the bullshit here is that you just don't want this happening to you, or or what? <laughs> like yeah. it scares you? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the only real loser here is the boyfriend or ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's you know bullshit for breaking up with this woman. You know, she's creative and uh, and. I don't know. You don't want to get on her bad side because she sounds kind of sounds like a crazy ass move, though. I think he made the right move on this on his end. <laughs> onions be damned, you know. If it takes if it takes getting a ton of onions in my front door, it was totally worth it to get away from this crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Zach. Let's move on to number six. German German prison sounds great. I mean, we got a story here from the New York Post. German cannibal gets supervised day trips while wearing disguise. I mean, you can be a cannibal and still be able to take a stroll out in the park, even out even out here in the, the while there's a global pandemic. That's how lenient German German prison is apparently. And the story of this guy. I mean, we're gonna show a picture. I mean, this guy. If I say who looks like a cannibal serial killer, I'd say oh, yeah, 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 that guy. Yeah, he does. Um. I love the quotes in the story about the, <laughs> oh, the the prison guards saying that he's like the most pleasant person they've ever dealt with, the most easygoing prisoner. I'm like, of course, because he's a cannibal. He's not going <laughs> to be a dick, you know what I mean? Because then you're not going to want to go around him, you know what I mean? So of course, <laughs> he's serving a life sentence. That's what I, they're like. Well, he's we have a, you know, he when he takes his little strolls through town, he's like had to, has two prison guards with him or or whatever to make sure he doesn't act up. But like he's already serving a life sentence. Like what's going to stop him just like jumping on top of someone and get a a quick bite. You know what I mean? He might not be able to eat them, but like if he just takes a bite out of their skin, like that's, (laughs) that's, that might be enough to like satisfy, satisfy his craving. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he's already serving a life sentence. Well, well, he's so polite because he's hoping you'll, you'll allow him to take a bite or something. Exactly. You know, you get a guy that's coming up to you being real polite. You're like, yeah, okay, I'll talk to you. And then all, all it takes is him just to like pull a vampire and like lunge at your neck and like, you know, get a good bite out of this section right here. Yeah. Hannibal Lecter was polite too, wasn't he? I assume. <laughs> but, uh, this is a, a German cannibal who got a life sentence. As you said, for killing and devouring a man whom he cut into steaks. <laughs> He, he Man's New York steak. <laughs> uh, now this is uh, as uh, this happened. This killing happened in 2006 uh, after he answered an ad in a gay magazine seeking a quote man to slaughter. Don's glasses <laughs> and a cap to mask his identity during trips. This is so weird. I mean, well, by the way, he, he describes uh, human taste. Human flesh tastes like pork, but stronger. Um, and then I sauteed the steak of burned with salt, pepper, garlic, and nutmeg. Well, so oh, it's a okay. good meal there. Yeah, so he's a chef, I guess. That's nice. <laughs> oh, this is disgusting. This is absolutely disgusting. Now, so this guy basically he brought in. Un- well, I don't know if the guy wasn't unwitting. I mean, did he? Did he? He wanted to die. I mean, if you answer an ad, become my meal. I mean, you kind of know what you're getting into, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I guess his definition of slaughter was different than. Uh, this guy's definition of slaughter. <laughs> oh, Christ. You know. um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is so funny here in the United States. We get people that are, that are, you know, uh, doing all, you know, getting coronavirus and getting able to get out of prison. And um, that's a big deal. But over, over in Germany, it's like, this guy gets to walk, walk around and just enjoy a nice sunny afternoon. And he fucking ate somebody you know? <laughs> it's nuts. There are more gory details in the New York Post that I don't. I don't even really want to say out loud. Um, we'll just 
Go find the story in the New York Post called German Cannibal Gets Supervised Day Trips While Wearing a Disguise. There's more details, more grisly details that we'll just leave that aside for now. I hope his disguise is like those old school like glasses with the fake like, nose and mustache. Yeah. I, hope that's, I really hope that's his disguise. No, no, no. It's- yeah. <laughs> Like Groucho okay. Marx or something yeah, like that. Yeah, looking like Mr. Potato Head, like just walking down the street. <laughs> now in Germany, if you're a cannibal, they'll let you out. All you got to do is put on a Groucho Marx mask. But in the, the, the prison system in the United States is a little different uh, than the one, the one, the only way, the only way you could possibly get yourself a chance to see in the outside world is to infect yourself with the coronavirus because we've been seeing how some places have municipalities have been you know really concerned about the prison population getting sick so they've been releasing them out uh, into the wild so to speak and now we've got a video here from uh, la county jail inmates this is a story from the la times la county jail inmates trying to infect themselves with coronavirus sheriff says and here they are let's, let's let's take a look at uh, what these what these hooligans are up to <laughs> The entire uh, Pitches Detention Center area, which is in Castaic, had zero cases of uh, COVID-19, none at all. And we were doing everything within our power to keep it that way. And uh, then all of a sudden we were, we saw a spike a few weeks ago. I mean, I, I, I can't help but say I, I get the logic, you know, because if they are releasing people who are getting sick, if I can get sick, then it gives me a better chance of getting out, right? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can die in a jail or I can <laughs> die outside. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? So I would choose that outside, personally. It's funny um, the way incentives work. So, yeah. Zach, what's the BS here? The BS that these guys are trying to do this to get out of a, a, a rule or is the, is, the, is the rule itself BS that if you get sick, you, you maybe give you a chance to get out? Well, as we've seen in other stories from people in New York, uh, I think the rule is bullshit, right? Yeah. How many people did we see on uh, that got released from uh, the New York prisons that ended up committing crimes extremely like right away as soon as they got out? Yeah, there was um, that guy. He went on like a he, he did like armed robbery within like yeah. a year or two. Yeah, he got out of jail and was like, you know what? Time to you know start committed crimes again um, yeah and i think there was another story and not just inmates but people they're re- they're reducing uh um a uh, bail or or you have like there's like a no bail. in other words you get arrested and then released and then i think there was a story where a man got arrested and re- arrested released got arrested again was released and got arrested again in the same day <laughs> yeah yeah you can find that story in formed american yeah. actually doc uh um, you can also find it in the silent features uh section of our youtube page this guy he yeah, he it was like he had three crimes in one day. Um, <laughs> each one, like he made, they like they, you know, it was like in the morning he committed a crime and they wrote him up, wrote him up, committed a crime in the in the afternoon. They wrote him up, committed another crime in the, at night, and they you know wrote him up. Oh, uh, so <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, too bad these guys. I think this prison in this topic was in uh, California, right? So yeah. Too- too bad this wasn't happening in New York because they could have all got out of you know jail pretty quickly. Yeah, no problem. Here, you just see it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> have fun. Don't don't hurt anybody. Uh, Zach, along the same lines as our number eight story, COVID terrorism. This story uh, is a combination here from Zero Hedge. We got we, in two instances of people. Uh, here's one in Michigan. A Michigan man. What these are these are free citizens just going out and trying to just be menaces and scare everyone or get them sick. Michigan man wiped his nose and face on the shirt of a store employee who was trying to enforce mask wearing requirement. Here we go again. I'm not going to wear. Okay, we're going to order a mask here. I'll give the mask. <laughs> 68 year old man was uh, okay. We got that. And then in St. Petersburg, Florida, not too far away from me, just uh, 30 minutes down the road, a man coughed and spit on police and threatened to spread the virus as they responded to a domestic violence call at home. And in San San Antonio, Texas, a man claimed in a Facebook post he paid someone to spread coronavirus at grocery stores. And then, uh, I'm sorry, in Philadelphia, a 27-year-old was arrested and charged with simple assault, domestic threats, and harassment after allegedly spitting on two people in a grocery store. So, this, I mean, you know, this is is corona terrorism, Zach. 
<laughs> All right. So here's when I read the story, I think using the word terrorism is going a little bit far. <laughs> I think that word needs to be reserved for actual terrorists, um, whether that be domestic or international. But I think walk, walk around coughing and spit on people is, is taking it a little little too far. Well, so what do we call this? <laughs> Assholes. <Just> assholes. <laughs> yeah, Assholeism. Being a dick. <laughs> being a dickhead. Um, so Zach, hold on. So Zach, you're calling bullshit on my on my head life. <laughs> is that what the bullshit is? <laughs> I think I'm calling bullshit on, on the uh, yeah on um, just the way that article was written about uh, calling people terrorists. And then you know they went to another thing where they were comparing it to people spreading HIV. I, I don't know, man. That's it. That's it. Seems like it's going a little too far. Um, I think these people are being assholes, and it's bullshit what they're doing. But um, you know, on that topic. I don't know if this is, uh, I know in California, this law may have changed, but I know in some places, some states, you can actually be convicted of murder uh, for knowingly, uh, you being, say, HIV positive and uh, not disclosing that to a partner is essentially attempted murder. It is a, it is a crime uh, to not let them know uh, that you have it. And if you're not, you know, without using protection or letting them know the risk. So could that apply to COVID-19? Ooh, that's a good way of looking at it, Dave. <laughs> now we're back on. So now we're comparing condoms to face masks, I guess. <laughs> that's, what <they're> <laughs> that's what's going on right now, right? Right. You should be if you're having sex with a stranger, you should be smart enough to use uh, protection. Uh, and now it's it's the same thing with wearing a face mask. If you're going out and being around strangers, you should wear protection, right? Which like is funny because this <laughs> leads into another thing and a story update that we talked about last week, Zach. We were speculating this mask thing was going on in the White House. Remember this story where they weren't mm -hmm. wearing the masks and a couple of staffers got sick? And then we're talking about President Trump, who himself just refuses to wear a mask. And uh, we were saying how he's getting tested. He's not getting it. And we're like, what? Is, is it possible that he's taking something uh, that, that is maybe helping him get along? And a story in the news came out uh, overnight that he was taking this hydroxychloroquine stuff uh, that, that, that he's been touting. And he says, hey, I've been taking it as a, as, a as a prophylactic. Now, I thought prophylactic just meant condom, but it means that it's a general, <laughs> it's a general term for something intended to prevent a disease. So we're really we're crossing over the yeah. Now in the intimacy aisle of your local like Target or Walmart, <laughs> we'll start seeing uh, <laughs> those pills and um, face masks. <laughs> uh, and I got a quote here from President Trump. He's like, we, we've got a, we got a big, beautiful aquarium in the White House. And I was looking at it and I saw, you know, there's a fish tank cleaner and it seems to be keeping. <laughs> no, that's not a real quote. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all remember that story, right? Now the, oh, yeah. No, the president never, just to be clear, everyone. I know the president didn't tell anyone to take fish tank cleaner. It's a similar ingredient, but he is taking that drug, that hydroxychloroquine, in combination with uh, with zinc, I believe, a high dose of zinc. So, hey, you know I tell what? you what, those high doses of zinc works. You ever get a cold? Yeah. Oh yeah, you go get those zinc, those yeah. zinc supplements. Man, it mm -hmm. knocks it out quick. It does work. Um, yeah, but. I don't even know where you can even find whatever. Uh, I can't even pronounce it because I'm an idiot. Uh, the uh, whatever hydroxychloroquine. It is yeah, where where it's do you got to be prescribed by a doctor? You okay. don't find it in your fish tank cleaner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't drink it. That's what I'm saying. Like I've never seen it in like pill form or anything like that. So it's behind the counter. It's uh, it I, from what I understand it. What it mostly does is a uh, is a drug to treat lupus patients. That's uh, mm. its most common use. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, you know, if but, it was like similar to like a Z pack, have you ever gotten prescribed one of those? Yeah. Yeah. I well, think. in fact, the, one of the treatments is this hydroxychloroquine in combination with a Z pack in combination with a high zinc dose. And okay. apparently if you take this early enough, it will prevent uh, really severe symptoms. That's the, that's the, that's the story on that. Yeah. Well, that's what it all is about, right? To prevent the symptoms. I mean, I guess that's any disease really. Yeah. It's like, if you can reduce it down to like just a, just a bad cold, then that's really no big deal at all. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Let, your, so, let your body figure out how to fight it and go from there. It, yep, exactly. All right. So we <laughs> through that, let's go to uh, our next story, Zach. Uh, along the, Now we're looking at, we're seeing all these people uh, really defying the lockdown orders saying, I'm going to open up my business. There was that story on Informed America that I did a video on and we wrote about that woman in Texas who uh, served a week in jail. Now we got another story. Uh, the star story number nine, a lockdown violator slapped with a massive fine mother of three salon owner found find fourteen thousand dollars for reopening uh, during Oregon lockdown claiming she, and then they sent child protective services to her house. Uh, so she, she had she a danger. Is she a menace? Zach? 
<laughs> should, should, should she have her children being taken away from her? She's definitely not a terrorist, as some people would <laughs> maybe call her. Um, no, you know, she had a, a good quote in this article from her um, talking about, you know, how only essential businesses are open right now, right? And I think her quote was something along the lines of like, you know, I need my job to, to live. I need my job to, everyone's job is essential in the sense that, right. you know, we need our jobs to make money to support Food ourselves. Essential. My rent yeah. is essential. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, um, there's a lot of kind of truth behind that. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Now, someone would say that she is, she is really not that much different morally than those inmates who are spreading the disease because her recklessness, her defying this lockdown order will lead to death, will lead to people getting sick and dying because of her reckless selfishness of uh, wanting to open up her salon. How do you respond to that, Zach? I mean, look, you know, you see pictures of uh, people in, in beaches, boardwalks, parks, everything that's starting to open. They're not social distancing. They're, you know what I mean? They're just absolutely not, you know, why there, there has to be a way that, that like a salon, like in this instance would be able to open, you know what I mean? Just I agree. Keep, every, keep everything clean. Keep your hands clean. Um, the person doing the hair can wear a face mask. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You know, obviously it would probably get in the, it might not even get in the way of the person. I mean, maybe a little bit uh, get in the way of the person that's getting their hair done. Um, but you don't see social distancing really anywhere in public was crowded. Right. So why, why couldn't you like have just like only allowed in the salon is the person in the chair and the person cutting the hair. Right. You know what I mean? Each chair is usually about like, it's definitely six at feet. The bar, yeah. At the barber, you know, you're, you're social distancing between me and the next person next to me getting their hair cut. Yep. hundred um, percent. So yeah, maybe you mask up, you glove up. Yeah. And, mask or, up. or if you don't even have to glove up, you got hand sanitizer. I, I'm not worried there at that yeah. point. Yeah, I mean, maybe even go as far as like saying like if you're a salon owner and you're open, just sign, have a form saying we're not liable if you get something, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's just come to a point where like certain businesses are going to have to open. And, we got um, to. Now, do you, what do you think about that? Now, we understand, okay, so she violated the, the order and there are, there are consequences to that. Uh, just like there are consequences for me for not keeping my dog on a leash. You got to face them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what about this $14,000, Zach? Is this excessive? That is extremely excessive. That's a lot of freaking money. <laughs> Especially after people have already had to have their businesses closed for how long? She's obviously already struggling with money. Yeah. And now she has a $14,000 fine on top of it. Like that, that's bullshit. 100%. You know what I mean? Zach, let's end this show with a, with a nice <laughs> bit of a laugh, this story. <laughs> Florida man goes for a swim. Video shows a man diving into a Bass Pro Shops fish tank. <laughs> of course, it's a Florida man. Yeah. You know, we've all thought about it. Every time oh, I'm at yeah. Bass Pro and I see that giant, take, that giant tank, it's like, that would be a, <laughs> be funny to go take a little dip in there and see what happens. Yeah, well, you know, the, here's the thing, though. And we're seeing weird, strange people doing strange things. And I think partially in response to uh, this sort of world we've been living in over the last couple of months, which is that public swimming pools are closed. You know, in most places around here, you can't go. The one at my... My uh, my townhome place is still locked down. I can't go to the pool because I guess you need like a lifeguard or someone to clean things or something like that. Yeah. So you know, humanity finds a way. So the guy <laughs> found the next closest swimming pool. I think it's going. Swimming with the fishes. <laughs> yes, exactly. So let's take a look at this. This is this is great. Diving into the deep end hey. of a Bass Pro's fish tank. That is. <laughs> We're talking about this guy taking a dip in the tank at the store in South Fort Myers. That cell phone video shows him climbing the stairs and then taking the plunge. To watch this whole thing would have been like, whoa, that guy just yeah. got up and he just kind of nonchalantly you know, just dives in. That's good. Yeah. Could you imagine if you're in the store and you just heard a splash and like, what the fuck was that? And you look over and you just see someone like under, under behind the glass, just like, you know, swimming, having a good time. <laughs> I'm this like, if, he, nice if he's able to like, if he's able to swim in there, I should be able to fish in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, what's the difference? Now, Zoom, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry. The, uh, the Bass Pro Shop says it cost uh, $3,000 to decontaminate the aquarium for the safety of the marine life and fish species. Do you believe that? Do you believe no. that cost them $3,000? No. I mean, I, I, okay, here's the deal. I bet it probably does cost $3,000 to disinfect it because you got to relocate the fish. You got to drain it and you got to disinfect it, fill it back up with water. But what I'm saying is like, 
did they need to spend three thousand dollars to disinfect it? It's just a guy jumping in. It's not like he's pouring like chemicals down into it or something like that. Yeah, he gets you know, in and out. I'm sure that water is a lot cleaner, even with this man jumping in, than those fish uh, naturally would have lived in. No, I I agree hundred percent. I I know you know if this was a saltwater tank, especially they, they they have a very delicate chemical balance. But I mean, this is <laughs> that's that's taking it a little far with the three yeah. grand. Uh, they, so they, apparently they. They already identified the man and they've been looking for him and they're going to get him with trespassing and uh, aggravated battery. Wait, oh no, this guy was previously arrested for robbery, aggravated battery and the sale of delivery of drugs um, and they're going to get him for trespassing essentially. So I, I don't know. I, I say let, let the man have a swim. Yeah, maybe he was high. He didn't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> it's like, hey, the beach and just jumped in. <laughs> but I, I don't want to encourage this, I guess, because then, you know, if everyone thinks that if this guy gets doesn't get in trouble, then it may, maybe people it'll encourage more people to go take a dive and swim. But I think the BS here is just just leave the guy alone. I don't know, we're all under stress. Let him let him take yeah. a dive. You get a pass this yeah. one time. Yeah, you get a pass this one time. Put put some security guards by your pools and then uh, call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I thank you all. That wraps up. Uh, thank you all for watching. That wraps our top 10 most bullshittiest stories of the week. I'd love to know what you think of all the items that we covered today by commenting below. Let's have a conversation. When we talk the ridiculous, the absurd, the bullshit. <laughs> Zach. And now you know, we talked about what we, what we do here in the BS pod, but uh, we, you know, we, we cover the lighthearted stuff. We kind of do a little bit of comedy, a little bit of humor, at least we try to, uh, but for something a little more hard hitting, where can, uh, what else can our material can they find at the tech? Yeah. So we go live uh, BS podcast every Tuesday on Friday. You sit down with Rodney Johnson, our uh, editor at informed American. Mm -hmm. And as you refer to him every week, every Friday, he's the smartest man, you know, so <laughs> yes. um yeah, he really is. And um, so on Fridays on Get Informed America, it's uh, another weekly podcast that we do at Formed American. They sit down, they talk really about more of the hard hitting stories, you know, and they do dive into things that um, really are really affecting, you know, American citizens. You know? Some and more they, important things that are going Yeah, exactly. They, 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 you won't find them talking about the Georgia lizard. -ish <laughs> fucking things. So, um, um, so I, I do encourage you. Yeah, Tegu. Yeah, it takes. Yeah. Um, so if, if this show isn't your cup of tea and you want something more serious, I encourage you to go check that out on Friday afternoons. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I don't get the opportunity to ask Rodney, you know, what, what I thought a, or I thought a prophylactic meant just condom. Um, we, we don't do that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, have to, I have to pretend to be smart when I talk to Rodney. That, that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, you can catch us at informedamerican.com for all, uh, all the stories on current events. We've got politics, money, culture, of course, BS. We've got health, all that stuff. And uh, you know, subscribe to this channel if, you're, if you are enjoying this content and hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching again. For Zach, I am Dave, and I've had enough of this bullshit. <laughs> You've been listening to the BS Podcast with Dave and Zach, part of the Informed American Radio Network. Please like and subscribe today in order to get fresh new weekly episodes. Please send us your BS stories to info at informedamerican.com. The world is hard enough. And now we got to deal with this bullshit. <laughs>